Hi, my name is Lorraine Watry and welcome to my studio. I am a watercolor artist and I've worked with watercolor for 26 years now and I thought I would start a new series of videos where I go over different tips, tricks and techniques for working with watercolor and hopefully these short videos will help you in your journey and if you have a question or a technique that you would like to see please comment below and I will try to accommodate that in a future video. This is the final part of the four-part series on doing a landscape and the first three videos uh, would be good to go watch and see the progress until this one but if you want to watch this one first and then go backward you're welcome to do that as well. So today I have out uh, my ultramarine blue, my quin gold and the uh, burnt sienna because I am going to go down into the water area and put uh, the trees, uh, the darker trees, into that area. So I am going to start by putting some water on the paper and there is an edge right up in here that is harder edged because it is right around um, the lighter uh, it, like I said before in the earlier videos, it might be leaves, it might also be algae or uh, something else in the water that is creating a little bit of a um, area between the land and the reflection. And so I am wetting everywhere. Now a little bit of the yellow. I did see a little bit of the yellow move, so I may have had a little bit of thicker paint right in there or it just may have lifted a little off of the surface. So I have to be a little gentle as I'm pulling color and be careful that I don't um, change the blue of the water too much with the yellow that's moving. And then I'm going to go get the Quinn Gold and make a blue-green and add a little bit of brown to it and then just a touch of water because I want to do this section and I'm going to dry my brush just a little bit and then come back in. I am watching this very closely as I am applying it because I want it to blur but I don't want it to move too much. So if it seems like it's moving a lot then I will pause and go over to this side. And it is moving, but so I have to watch down in here. I am not quite doing what my photo is showing because the photo is showing it with a harder edge. And um, I want to have it be a little more blurred to give it the difference between the reflection and the landscape. So I have the um, mix on my palette is drier. I don't want it too wet. And I'm varying the color of the green just a little bit here and there. And then as I come up to this edge right here, there's a few places where it is a little darker right in next to that edge because the water is um, you can see the the difference between the edge of the water and the uh, sorry the blurry uh, shapes in the water and just a few more marks there alright and then I need to come over here kinda fast because it's starting to dry and you could split this up into two um, so that if you didn't want to try to do both of these at the same time you could do that as well so you could wet the whole thing and then just do one side and then let it dry and then come back and uh, wet the other side and do the other side now if you're having issues, if you're doing a painting like this and it's hard for you to see or hard for you to paint um, the opposite image, paint it upside down, 
just, just turn your paper around and paint the image going the other way. And that is a good way to create it without... Um, sorry, I'm trying to think and paint right now. Um, it's a really good way to do that is to turn the paper around and paint it the opposite direction if it's hard for you to paint um, going upside down. Okay. A little bit in there. And there's a few hard edges in here, so if this starts to feel hard edged uh, down in this area as I'm painting, then I may um, stop and let it dry and then re wet. And it's always better with watercolor to be patient and pause if you need to and come back to it rather than uh, to push it and maybe cause an issue because you're trying to work too quickly with it. Alright, so this is still damp enough that I can come into it. And I just have to remember to put the branches the opposite direction. And it is a little bit lighter, which is what I want, because in the um, water, the trees should appear a little bit lighter than what is up above, just because of the trees up above being quite a bit of shadow, and so I want to have the reflection not be as strong as the original trees. And I do have mask down here in the water on these edges right here. And I'm liking those little dots right there. I don't think those are masked, but uh, they have a nice feel to them, so I'm going to leave them. They feel like little sparkles in the water. And those are called happy accidents. So when something like that happens and it's working, then you just go with it. I want that edge to be a little darker. And there is a tree right here. So I need to make sure I get that in. And I am not seeing the tops of the trees of these guys over here. So I want to make sure I don't put the top of the tree in here. And there's maybe a little bit of one peeking out right in here. I am going to go back in here just a little bit because I want a little variety in the values down in here. And since it is still wet enough and my brush is very dry, the paint on the palette is dry, I can go back into a few of these areas and darken a little bit. If I, um, if this had already started to dry too much, it would be better for me just to um, let, let it dry, leave it alone, let it dry, and then I could come back later. Okay, so I have the reflection in the water and uh, I have the edge where it is harder edged going. Now some of those marks are a little uh, large, they're a little too wide on the edges so I can just come in with a brush that is smaller and a little water and I can adjust those edges so that they're not quite as wide, plus it pulls a little of the color that's in there, may not be completely dry, or it just moves the amount of that, um, color that I have in there, moves a little bit. And so just coming up to the edge and softening a few of the edges here and there can um, make it feel more uh, realistic. A few hard and soft edges are good things in watercolors. So I have both going on in there. And then when I remove the mask, 
some of this edge right here may change and look a little different because of where the masking is. Um, it will create lighter shapes and then I may have to go back in and adjust it again. Um, so now I'm going to, while this is drying down here, I'm going to go up and add a little more texture to the trees at the top. And I'm going to pull out my new gamboge and uh, the cobalt because I used some of that for the greener parts and then I will get out a little bit of the Quinn Rose to use uh, to make oranger leaves if I decide I want those. Alright, so I have the Quinn Gold and I'll grab just a touch of the Quinn Rose to start. So I'll give this area a little bit of some texture and what I'm looking for is not necessarily to try to paint every possible leaf that might be on these trees, but I'm just looking for a few places here and there that I can add some texture and grouping the leaves. Um, you can have a few individual every now and then, but the leaves that sort of group and make a bigger shape with edges that are interesting, those are going to feel like um, masses of leaves that, that are on the tree. And so I'm looking for a way to give a little more texture to the tree, but not necessarily paint every leaf. And you can use water here and there to soften some of those edges. Um, if I had, like I said in the earlier part of this um, painting, if I had uh, bigger aspen trees that I was working on, I could use my spray bottle and spritz it with the water and then apply pigment and you would get um, nice, real interesting shapes that way. You could also use a uh, wet sea sponge to apply um, pigment or if you wanted to, you could block off this section and use your brush and spatter um, the pigment on there. I can do a little bit of that, but I don't know if it will show up. So I'm getting little tiny uh, flecks of paint there. Let me see if I can get this a little wetter. Now the one thing on here to block up at the top would be the sky. I don't necessarily want lots of little uh, yellow spots randomly in the sky and I think I'm far enough away from the bottom that this won't go down there. So yeah, it's probably not viewable. It's They're just too small. So I will stop doing that and go back to doing this. Okay, and then as I come to the the right, I'm going to dab some water in here because it's a bigger shape just like I did earlier. And then I can use some green in here. So I'm just varying the colors here and there so that I get a variety of leaves and you don't have to use the same color where you used it before. If you want to vary it, you can, and then that'll just feel like the canopy of the tree has um, some different colors in different places. I need a little more cobalt out. And it's really nice when you have, like I just did here, when you have yellow behind and you come on top of it with green or orange or something like that and the yellow will um, kind of pop out and glow through the other color. Just a little in there. And then the other place that I'm going to add a little bit is a few places right in here because some of these guys are so flat that they don't really read as trees. And for those, I'll make bigger um, shapes. I did add a little water 
to uh, the paper so that parts of those shapes that I'm painting on right now will be uh, hard edged and some will be soft edged. Alright, so I'm getting toward the end. I will have to dry this. One of the things I'm going to do before I dry it though is I am going to add some shadow um, down in here because those trees would cause shadows and so I want to add that and that will help with the feeling of sunlight. So I'm going to use Quinn Magenta and my uh, ultramarine blue that I have over here and I want to use the clean ultramarine blue so that I can make a uh, kind of red purple, not too uh, much on the red side but a little bit and then in a few places here I'm also looking at my edges as I'm doing this because I want to make sure that um, I make it feel like it's sh shadows over grass so then I'll get the shadow underneath the aspen that are over here and uh, there is shadow that comes quite a ways out right up in here so I want to make sure and it does help to have these areas masked because um, I can go in and paint the shadows and not have to think about those trees that uh, the trunks are lighter that uh, if I didn't have the mask there I'd have to paint around so uh, that is helpful. And then in the um, background there, I'm actually going to see if I can get my brush kind of dry and just try to sort of place a few uh, dry brush marks. So my brush is not technically dry dry, it's just slightly damp. And if I come in with paint that is not very wet, I can create some marks on the paper that kind of skip over the surface and give you a little bit of a rougher uh, feel there and so that makes it uh, interesting those textures do. Okay so the last thing is I'm going to dry the paper well not last thing I need to take the mask off so I will take the mask off and show you a couple things with the Aspen um, I may not finish the painting uh, except for at the very end I'll, I'll post it at the end of the video but I'm going to dry this and then I need to adjust the water one more time before I am ready to remove the mask. So I'll be right back. Before I remove the mask, there's one more thing that I want to do down in the bottom where the reflection is. So I, and this is not something you have to do, uh, but it's just one thing that I want to try and that would be to add a glaze of color over this area so that it mutes it a little bit more and um, brings attention up here and so I am going to get out Quinn Magenta and a little more of my ultramarine blue and then I will probably also pull out uh, some of the blue for in this area because I want to darken it just a little. So I have my ultramarine blue over here and I'm going to make a purple and I want the purple to be on the redder side of purple. I don't want it too blue and then I'm going to add a lot of water so that it's um, dripping off my brush. It's very runny not a lot of value in it. It will be a light glaze over this. And then the other thing I said I was going to do is get out some cobalt and I may get out a touch of the Quinn Rose to go in it. So first of all the cobalt and that was the color that I used up here. I did use some cerulean also in there so I may pull that out as well. And one of the reasons that I'm doing this is just I want this to be a touch darker maybe than what it is. 
So when I'm working with watercolor, I do do I do layers. I paint in layers, and I work from lightest to darkest, and I build it slowly. Um, sometimes I paint an area in and it's good, and I don't ever have to make adjustments to it. And other times I will go back and add layers. All right, so I have my colors out, and I'm going to add water to the paper. And I think I'm going to use my round brush rather than the flat. Uh, flat brushes tend to have a slightly stiffer bristles, and so the round brush I can sort of skim over the surface a little easier than the flat brush. And hopefully I can avoid moving too much of the color that's there. And that already is starting to mute it a little bit because the darker green is now being pulled over the yellow. So sometimes you can just get away with just putting a little clear water over something and it will kind of merge the colors together a little bit and mute what's there. Okay, so that's already working, but I think I'm still going to go into the purple and I'm going to come right over some of those lighter edges and I think I need more. And I need more red in it. Whoops, a little more Queen Magenta. And a touch of water. All right. And then as I come across, I will leave little areas where the yellow is kind of glowing through. And I will probably come back through with some yellow in a couple places as well. And before I do that, I'm going to get just a little bit of the cerulean right in here. And then use my cobalt with a little bit of the rose. And then I'm going to come into the new gamboge because it's my warmer, brighter yellow. And I'm using it pretty dry so that I can come over some of these yellows down in the water. Yeah, it's working okay. It's um, probably more muted than I normally would like, but it is fun to try and see what happens. And the paint I am putting on right now is wetter than what is there, so it is going to push against the other pigment and kind of basically sort of open up the areas that were starting to close um, and get darker and by having it be a little wetter I am basically causing it to sort of create a bloom so I will have to watch and see what happens but I think it might work okay. Alright so then There's a couple places up in here where this tree, any place that is the darkest dark and the lightest light, can draw your attention. And so I don't necessarily want right in the middle of that tree to be the center of interest. So I'm going to just go into a few of these little guys that were created when I painted 
the dark around it and just by using a little water on my brush and going over those edges I can soften that just a little so that it's not as intense. Now some of these do need trunks um, but I'm not going to do that just yet and then I need to uh, let this sit for a few minutes because it's still a little shiny down here. I will dry it and then I'll be right back to show you removing the mask. I will now remove the mask. The paper is dry and I masked uh, the trunks for the aspen up here and a few places in the water. And I'm using a uh, rubber cement pickup tool to lift. And there are a few edges that I'll have to go clean up. I was trying to mask quickly and so some of them are a little big or a little out of, they're not quite the right shape. So it's best when you're masking if you can take your time and uh, not go too quickly with it. Make your shapes as neat as you can so that you don't have to go back and clean them up later. Okay, so I know for the ones in the water that I will need to soften their edges and make them a little blurrier. Now you can, if you're doing water like this, you could paint around it and then you wouldn't have to go soften edges, but um, it is a little harder for me to do that when I'm trying to uh, demonstrate and so it's usually easier for me to go ahead and mask them and then come and clean it up. So I'm using a stiffer bristle brush and going along these edges I can use a little water and the brush and in the water it softens the tree shape just enough that it feels like it's blurry and a part of the the water. And because of the direction of the reflection and the flow and everything I think these will feel okay down here if they're a little strong I will probably go and in and put some color back over them to soften them a little more even than what I'm getting right now and there are some that are in shadow so some of these will probably get shadows on them at least Okay. And I think you can see the outcome where the ones that I have gone over and softened the edges a little bit with the water and the, the stiffer bristle brush, um, that they're uh, soft edged and feel like they're part of this, whereas these are hard edged and they, they are sticking out like sore thumbs. So there's that, and then for some of those that are up in here, I need to go back in with a little bit of color and clean them up just a touch. So, for instance, this one, there is an evergreen right next to it, and so I'm going to use some of the evergreen branches over the top edge, or top, or side, I guess I should say, of the... Um, white trunk to make it feel like it's kind of in and around or behind some of that uh, foliage from the tree. And same thing here. Just clean it up, make it a little smaller. And then any bottom edge or top edge that is that doesn't feel like it, it works. Let me clean up one more area here first on this one. Okay, um, so any area that it feels like it's uh, not quite right, you can either come in with the the color around it, so I could use some yellow and put a few shapes next to it to clean it up. Maybe that one's a little too big. Or I can take the um, scrubber brush again and a little water and I can soften uh, that edge on the end of that line and just by coming in and adjusting a few edges here and there and softening them 
they sort of push back a little bit and they feel like they fit uh, in the scene now where before they um, stick out and don't work. So then this one is too wide for the top edge of that tree right in there. So basically I'm either using paint and matching as close as I can to the area but here it works pretty good for trees because you have some variety usually in the color and so if it's not exact it won't really show up because it's going to look like it, some of the other leaves that might be around the trunk. Um, so I will go in and clean up all of this before I would uh, paint on what I'm going to do next but to make the marks on the tree trunks actually first I will do some shadowing and uh, so I'm going to use the ultramarine blue and the Quinn magenta that I already had out and maybe a touch of the cerulean here and there let me start I think I'll start with the cerulean and I'm going to shadow the uh, right side and I started with cerulean and then I'm going to go down into the purple because I like in shadows where there's a little variety of color but these are so far back that some of that's not necessarily going to even show up but it's more about giving a little bit of form to the tree trunk by putting a shadow side on it okay so I have those two guys in I think I'll do one more maybe I'll go back to some cerulean over here and on some of these I'm making it feel like there are branches that are curving around the trunk causing some shade on them or shadow on them and then once those would be dry and those are not quite dry but I think they're dry enough I may eat my words here in a second but I'm going to use ultramarine blue and burnt sienna very dry not a lot of water in the mix to make a dark kind of brown black and then I can just come in with a few marks here and there that feel like some of the marks that you would get on an aspen tree. And I'll do a few more here and because these trees are farther back um, I don't want the marks to be too big for one but also um, too many of them because we just wouldn't see to um, see all those little marks that would be on them and then once I have that on there I can also come in and I can generally flick away from the trunk if I can get my brush going the right way and uh, create some branches that would be coming out from the trunk or in between the foliage in places where you might have some of the branches from those aspen. Get a little more random so they're not all the same. Um, if you're using a liner brush those work really well for uh, creating foliage but because these trees are so small it um, doesn't seem like it would really make much difference to get it out right now the number four is working pretty good alright so uh, I would go and finish that across the whole thing and then um, I would be done but since I'm not going to have you wait through that whole process I will go ahead and I would film it but I'll speed it up so that you can kind of see how I finished the painting and I hope it was interesting seeing the process of, of starting with the lightest colors and the sky and seeing the reflections go in and some of the textures in the grass and um, how to create foliage and all of that.
And if you have a, a watercolor tip, trick, or technique that you would like to see, please comment below and feel free to share these videos so that the information will get out there to other artists. And I hope you have a good day. Bye!